What if I told you that you can chop up samples using Waze Audio's CR8 plugin? It's possible. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a sample. It will be a sample that I have linked in the description boxes by uh, MXX Audio, by the way. Some of the best sample makers in the world. And the first thing we're gonna do is this. So the main question I hear people ask is, how do you chop up samples? Well, first, let's find out how to play the samples. You can simply play your sample by hitting a key on the keyboard or putting in some MIDI events in your piano roll. The next biggest question people ask is, can you chop up the samples or trim the samples rather? Well, yes you can by using either the starting and end points right over here. So this is the start point and this is the end point. And what we're gonna do is simply trim it by going over here to the end part of that sample and have a listen to it, use the loop function and listen to it. And if it loops perfectly at the end, then we'll move on from here. It's a dope sample, by the way. What we need to do is bring this over just a little bit and it should loop perfectly now and hit this right here, which is the crop sign and it will chop the sample. And to check it, to see if it's fine, I would move the start point over and see if it loops perfectly. Here's a cool thing you should do. Uh, for those who don't know, you can change the root key or suggest a root key to this so if you wanted to force it to C then you can or you can just force it to the BPM of choice which is 92.1 so that's what it calculated and now this sample will fit to your BPM of your beat here's a good practice for when you sample or whatnot I, I recommend that you do some filtering to a sample uh, just to get some of the extra bass out and allow the sample to sit a little higher in the mix so what I did was I accessed the high pass filter and then I will press the key on my keyboard and I need to turn on the filter. So that's the first thing you need to do. And you won't hear anything because it's a high pass filter until I sweep all the way to the left side. All right, now that we have that, we are cool. Another cool tip, there are different time stretch modes too. Since you already got the BPM of the sample after chopping it up, uh, you will go over here to either beats, which will give it a different timbre. And you can go to harmonics. And all these will give your sample a different texture. So I'm gonna stick with melodic. And now I'm going to take this sample and duplicate it. So all you have to do is on both Windows and Mac, left click and drag it over to the plus sign. We're gonna continue to do that until we have enough samples to chop. Next, let's talk about key groups or keyboard zones. So I will click on this tab right here and it will pull up the different zones. So what I wanna do is Put everything around C2 and C3. So let's go ahead and access C2. Just keep on going until you get to C2. You can see it being represented on the graphic. And then I'll drag that over because I want that to be one shot. And then I'll take this and put it as D2. So make sure that you get the to D2, get it to D2. And then Left drag that over and it will lock to D2. And rinse and repeat that until the process is over and done the way you want. For referencing purposes, I will show you what I did over here. So you can see I mapped all of the samples to the white keys. It's worth mentioning that you can only have eight keyboard zones, so you could basically have eight chops, but it's all about what you do with those eight chops. Now that we have the key groups laid out, let's 
play with the keys. You see the black keys don't do anything, but if I play uh, these keys right here, C2, they are played on the tabs. The next thing you want to do within the keyboard zones or key groups as I like to call it, uh, is make all these parameters down here where it says scaling 100% to zero. So let's go over here to tab number two, where I have it in melodic mode and classic mode. Uh, one of the things that I would like to do is uh, switch in between, you know, melodic or voice. And since that's the second chop, I can do whatever I want. I can still continue to, to filter. I might want this more more bassy. I might not want to loop this, so I'll turn that loop off. And you can see the difference between the two here. Uh, but what I want to do is add this to a chop. So I will mess with the start point. And maybe add a loop point here. If you get any pops, you can just hit this X sign right here and it will give you a fade. And you can adjust and if you want, you can crop it. We can go over here to the next shop. And let's say we want this part right here. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's listen to it. That's chop number three. Maybe we want voice on that one. And maybe we want to mess with the speed. So let's drop it down. We can choose to freeze it. Or we can reverse it. Then we can move on to our next shop where we might go with the plucks. So let's go ahead and go to the guitar pluck. And it plays a little fast. So again, we can just two times it down. And now we have something more unique. We could even play with other parameters. Widen that part of the sample, pan it. Change the volume. Speaking of looser chops here, you do have groups. So you can choose to put stuff in like one group so you can have them cut each other off. So you can assign different groups. So this is how choke groups will work in the sense in here. So it's kind of free form. So now we have the sample chop. You noticed through the whole entire video that the volume was pretty low on it. And that's where I want to show you the global settings. So you can set your output up here. I have it at 12. There we go. Now let's hear it. And that ultimately affects every one of these because it's global. Uh, instead of just you affecting the volume on one chop, but you can if you want to uh, by going over here to this volume parameter right here. Also, I can affect tune. You can fine tune, glide, and stuff like that. Uh, but I, I would recommend changing the voices to one so it can chop it off without you using the groups. And if you want to add release or something like that, you can do that. And it'll still chop it. So let's hear what we got. Hmm. And now you yeah, have chopped up a sample inside of here. There are other things that I want to point out, like the ability to route modulation, which is something that is totally different from what I'm used to on the MPC, to be quite frank. So that means I could do things like maybe some modulation, I drag and drop it over here. Boom. 
and then I can apply it to that LFO in modulation one. Oh yeah. So, tell me how you feel about this video. I definitely wanna hear from you guys in the comment section. Well, <laughs> I wanna give a special shout out to David over there at Waves. Uh, he's a pretty dope dude. And he actually showed me a, a couple of things that you could do with the CR8 plugin that I didn't think about. And for sampling, it is actually getting better than some of the experience I've had with the MPC. I hate to say that, but <laughs> It actually pulls a lot of uh, inspiration from that machine. And I'm, I am talking about the current MPC Live X01. But yeah, let me know how you feel if you own it or if you're thinking about getting it. The link's in the description box.